Hi everyone, welcome back. In this video, we'll be demonstrating some of the more common image processing techniques that are often used in computer vision pipelines. And to do this, we're gonna build on the camera demonstration from the last video where we sent streaming video from the camera to an output window in the display. However, this time we'll be doing some image processing on the video frames first and then send those results to the output display. So we hope you find this informative and to get started, we'll first take a look at the code and then execute it so we can talk more in depth about the various processing techniques and their associated parameter settings. So starting on line uh, 39, we're defining the four different run modes for the script, which include a preview mode, a blurring filter, a corner feature detector, and a canny edge detector. Then on line 44, we're defining a small dictionary of parameter settings for the corner feature detector, and those include uh, the maximum number of corners that the algorithm will return. Uh, quality level is a parameter for characterizing the minimum acceptable quality of image corners. And the way that works is that the corner feature with the highest value in the entire image is multiplied by this parameter. And then that value is used as a minimum threshold for filtering corner features from the final list that's returned by the algorithm. So for example, if you had several features uh, that were detected and the uh, maximum value of those features was 100, then we'd multiply 100 by 0.2, which would be 20, and then 20 would be the threshold for determining whether or not a, uh, a feature corner was detected. And then the, uh, the next parameter here, uh, the minimum distance, this is the minimum distance between adjacent uh, feature corners, and this is measured in pixel space. So it's the Euclidean distance in pixel space which describes uh, how close two corner features uh, can be in the list that's returned from the algorithm. And then finally, block size is the size of the pixel neighborhood that is used in the algorithm for computing uh, the feature corners. So this next block of code starting on line 48 uh, is very similar to the code in the previous video where we're setting the uh, device index for the camera, creating an output window for the uh, streamed results and then creating a video capture object so that we can process the video stream in the loop below. So here on line 61, uh, we enter a while loop and uh, first line in that loop is to um, read a frame from the video stream. And then on line 66, I'm going to um, uh, flip that frame horizontally, uh, mainly as a convenience for myself so that it's easier for me to point things out uh, in the video stream. And then uh, here on line 68, depending on the run configuration uh, for the script, we'll be executing uh, one of these uh, functions in OpenCV. Of course, if we're in preview mode, we're simply gonna take the frame and set that to the result and then display that directly um, to the uh, output window using IM show. But for these other run modes, we're gonna do some processing first and then send the processed results to the output window. So starting on line 71, uh, here we're calling the canny edge detection function in OpenCV. And uh, the first argument there is the uh, image frame. And then there's two additional arguments, a lower threshold and an upper threshold. The upper threshold is used for deciding whether or not a series of pixels should be considered as an edge. So if the intensity gradient of those pixels exceeds the upper threshold, then we'll declare those pixels as constituting a sure edge. And likewise, for pixels whose intensity gradients are below the lower threshold, then those segments will be completely uh, discarded. However, for the pixels whose gradients fall in between these two thresholds, we'll consider those as candidate edges if they can be associated with a nearby segment that has already been declared as an edge. So in other words, we're allowing for weaker edges to be connected to stronger ones if the weaker edges are likely to be along the same true edge. And we'll see an example of that when we run the demo for edge detection uh, in just a little bit. Uh, then the uh, next function here is a blur function in OpenCV. And uh, this blur function uh, uses a box filter to blur the image. So the first uh, input to this function is the image frame itself. And then this uh, second input are the dimensions for the box kernel. So this would be a 13 by 13 box kernel that would be convolved with the image to result in a um, uh, blurred image. So if the uh, size of the kernel is smaller, then the blurring is less. And if the size of the kernel is larger, then you get uh, more substantial blurring. And then uh, finally, for the corner feature detector, converting the frame, uh, the image frame to a grayscale image. And then on line 77, we're going to call the function good features to track. And although it isn't indicated in the name of this function, uh, what this function does is compute uh, corner features. So the first argument is a grayscale image of the uh, video frame. And then the second argument is that uh, dictionary of uh, feature parameters that we described uh, up above. 
And so uh, what that returns is a list of uh, corners that were detected in the image. And if we have uh, one or more corners detected, then we're going to simply annotate the result with uh, small green circles to indicate the locations of those features. And then uh, after we're done with all this, uh, whatever result we have under whatever run mode we've been working with, we're going to send that to the uh, output stream. So this next block of code here is simply monitoring the keyboard for user input. Uh, the script was written so that the run modes could be toggled interactively. So for example, if you were running in preview mode and you wanted to uh, transition to candy detection mode, you would simply type a C on the keyboard. So that's all there is. There really isn't very much code required to uh, implement this. And uh, at this point, we're ready to go ahead and execute the script and we'll cycle through uh, the different uh, run options and talk a little bit about the um, results that we see. So this is the preview mode. And here we're simply sending the video stream from the camera uh, to the output window and the display. So what I'd like to do next is uh, toggle through the other filters that we implemented and we'll start with the blurring filter. So I'm gonna type a B on the keyboard and you can see that the image has been slightly blurred. There's a few reasons you might wanna do this. Uh, for example, if you had a noisy image, you could apply a small amount of blurring and still obtain an aesthetically pleasing result. Uh, but more importantly, in uh, computer vision and image processing, we often use blurring as a pre-processing step to uh, performing uh, feature extraction. And the reason for that is that most feature extraction algorithms uh, use some kind of uh, numerical gradient computation and uh, performing uh, numerical gradients on raw pixel data can be a rather noisy and um, not well behaved process. So uh, smoothing the image prior to uh, performing gradients uh, turns out to be much more robust and well behaved. And so that's uh, one of the primary reasons uh, we use blurring in computer vision. So now let's take a look at um, the next option, which is the uh, corner feature detector. So now I've uh, turned that mode on and you can see uh, a small amount of uh, corner features in the image. There's some here on the microphone. There's a few around my face here. And in particular, there's uh, uh, several there in the uh, painting of the horses behind me. And um, we're going to talk a little bit about uh, how uh, these features are generated based on the uh, input arguments. Uh, that we selected. And there were two input arguments that we talked about in particular. One was a minimum um, distance between features, uh, which is fairly straightforward. And then the other one was a um, uh, quality level of the features. So first we'll talk about the um, minimum distance. So here I've got a textbook with uh, some very well-defined characters on the front that have nice sharp edges and we're detecting all kinds of corners in those characters. You can see that um, each of those uh, letters probably has two, maybe three uh, corner features for each character, but if, when I move the book much closer to the camera, you'll see now that um, there are several more corner features associated with each character, and the reason for that is that those letters are much larger in pixel space. So now I'm not constrained by the minimum distance between, uh, between the features because I've um, made the letters so much larger in pixel space. And then one other thing uh, I'd like to talk about is um, I draw your attention to this uh, section of the book here with this graphic image on it. If I put this very close to the camera, uh, we're gonna see that uh, we detect all kinds of corners associated with the dots in that uh, pattern of the book there. So the reason those are jumping around so much is that I'm having a hard time holding the book really still, but the main point is that I'm, I'm getting all these uh, detections here. Now watch what happens when I uh, lower the book and expose uh, the text from the title of the book. As soon as I expose the text from the title, all the uh, features associated with the graphic image below have been filtered out. So let's take a look at that again. I raise the book and I get all these uh, features here. And now when I lower the book and expose uh, the title of the book, all those have been filtered out. And the reason for that is that that quality level threshold uh, we talked about is based on the uh, highest score for a corner feature in the entire image. And because the corner features associated with these characters in the title of the book are so much stronger, their feature score is higher, and therefore we're effectively raising uh, the detection threshold uh, for corner features. So I just thought that was an interesting um, example of how that uh, parameter is actually used and how it can affect um, uh, the algorithm uh, in your particular application. So uh, uh, finally, let's uh, go ahead and cycle to the um, uh, canny edge uh, detection. So I'll 
uh, toggle to that mode. And so now you can see the results of edge detection here. You can see the uh, microphone is very well defined. The corner of my shoulder against the light background of the wall is very well defined. And then uh, up here uh, behind my shoulder, you see a painting of some horses. And uh, the subject matter in that painting is, is uh, partially defined, but there's a lot of uh, broken edges in that painting. And so I thought it'd be interesting to um, talk about the threshold inputs for the canny edge detector and see if we can improve what that looks like. So before we do that, I'm going to make a screen snap of this uh, video feed just so we can have something to compare to. So I'll put this aside and now I'm going to edit the uh, threshold for the canny edge uh, detector. So uh, previously the lower threshold was very close to the upper threshold so there wasn't much opportunity for us to find some weaker edges and connect them to stronger edges but if I lower this to something like 80 uh, we now have an opportunity to consider uh, weaker edges that might be associated with the stronger edges. So I'm going to go ahead and run this and uh, now we'll put these side by side uh, for a comparison. So if you take a look at the uh, image down below, you can see that again, the, the outline of the horses was rather uh, broken in some places. And now if you compare that to the video stream up above, you can see that there's been some improvement. We're effectively uh, extending the definition of these edges because we're allowing those edges to be connected to weaker edges uh, that were in between those two thresholds rather than discarding those edges altogether. So uh, I thought that was an interesting uh, way to demonstrate um, how those uh, inputs uh, affect the results. Uh, obviously all these algorithms require uh, some experimenting and uh, tuning and, and things that will depend on your particular application but uh, we hope this was a nice introduction for you and uh, definitely encourage you to take a look at the OpenCV documentation on these functions and other functions and uh, write similar scripts like this one here and do some experimentation. So that's all we wanted to cover in this video and uh, we'll see you next time. Thank you.